Hey y'all, welcome to the Circle CI 101 demonstration. My name is Ryan Pedersen. I am a senior solutions engineer at Circle CI, and I will be leading the demo today. Let's set the agenda uh, in terms of what we're planning to cover. Here are the main pieces. We're gonna start off by defining the themes that we're gonna focus on through the course of the demo and then the metrics that we use to define those. We'll jump into the underlying architecture. So just think how everything works. Then we'll jump into the actual product, get our hands dirty and do the real demo. So to quickly set the stage on the themes that we'll be hitting on during this video, speed, reliability, flexibility, determinism, and scalability. How we'll quantify some of those themes a bit is with the door metrics. We're very big on those. Ultimately, we want to focus on the types of important benchmarks that we see high-performing teams use, and the door metrics is a great way to do this. So now that we've set the stage on those underlying themes, let's define some terms. And we'll do this with the configuration hierarchy from top to bottom, let's define them. The highest level in CircleCI is the pipeline. And when we are saying pipeline, you can think of it as all of the workflows triggered on your project with the relevant parameters. Workflows coordinate a set of related work from start to finish. So it's the orchestration of jobs, which job is running and in which order. A job is a collection of steps run in the execution environment that you specify. And a step is a small segment of work, just a command or set of commands run during a job. I mentioned that each job is a collection of steps in an execution environment. With CircleCI, there are a lot of options for you to choose from there. You can choose from one of our cloud environments, so Docker, Mac, Windows, a VM, or it can be your own custom hosted runner. We see a workflow using all of them together on the left. On top of that, for our cloud resources, we have a huge variety of resource classes available. We see our example Docker executor resources on the right, so it could be anywhere from 20 CPU, 40 gigs of RAM, all the way down to one CPU, two gigs of RAM. Really lets you find your perfect Goldilocks zone um, for each job. And we talked about writing config. You can absolutely write out all of the commands you want in the environment that you specify, but you can also utilize orbs. Orbs are CircleCI's package manager. They are reusable configuration as code. So think best practices, custom scripting, all these things bundled up into few or single lines of configuration that are versioned and easy to add into configs. Here are a few examples from our registry of partner and circle CI orbs to help you accomplish whatever goals you have. Excellent. Now that we have covered the basics, let's get on to the demo. We are now in circle CI. We're at the pipelines page. In terms of visibility around the work being done across the organization, the pipelines page is a great place to start. It provides a bird's eye view. You can filter by project, by your pipeline versus everyone's pipelines, by branch, and then by a slew of different options around the status of the pipeline. I'm gonna jump into one that's on a Circle Demo React project and on my dev branch. Pipelines themselves are kicked off in a few ways. Uh, when there's a change in the VCS, when they're triggered by the API, or here in the UI, I can kick one off with any of the parameters that I want to add in. Inside of an older pipeline, I can also rerun the workflow that has the same configuration and is tied to the original trigger. We're gonna see a good amount of work running here. Really, you have unlimited horizontal scale. Why that's important to us is by eliminating queuing and having that ability to scale, you can increase deployment frequency. No need to worry about when on and off hours might be, just commit when you're ready. One level down from the pipeline is the workflow. I'm gonna pull up the same workflow on two different branches. Starting with our dev branch, we see our build, test, deploy workflow with a few jobs running. Again, a workflow is the orchestration of jobs each box that we see here is a job. They're each their own independent, ephemeral environment. We want quick validation for the developers on their change, especially on dev branch. So this just builds the app, runs a couple of testing suites concurrently, and then builds and pushes a dev Docker image that I can use outside of this. 
As I mentioned before, these can all be different environments. Each job can choose the right tool for what it needs to accomplish, both with the base layer and with the CPU and RAM. By being able to have different environments and vertical scale for each job, we can reduce workflow duration in a very optimized manner and get feedback into the hands of devs quicker. Going over to the main branch, we can see the same build test deploy workflow that we saw in dev. We can also see some additional work. On main, I want to run static analysis, integration tests. I have a manual hold that I want to have approved before I get out to my clusters as well. So there are a lot of things happening here on that main branch and to be able to do all of these things that I need and also reduce workflow duration, we have some amazing levers that we can pull in terms of speed optimizations. These are things that just work in CircleCI. For the first couple, let's jump into the unit testing job. Again, for a job, you can see it's an environment that you specify. In this case, it's a Docker environment. And then a list of steps in that environment. The first lever is dependency caching. CircleCI has a convenient step to help with this. In my case, I'm caching node modules, so I don't need to install everything from scratch. The second lever we can pull here is test splitting and parallelism. For long test suites, you can define a number of containers to use for the job. And with a CircleCI helper command, split the testing step across those containers in a really optimized way. Huge speed gains, a fantastic way to help reduce workflow duration. Another really great built-in way to reduce workflow duration is with Docker layer caching. If you are building a Docker image as part of your deployment process, it's a no-brainer. You can cache Docker layers, so you don't need to do everything from scratch. You can see I have two Docker build jobs. One of them does, one of them has DLC enabled, and one does not. So the difference right there. Now we just saw two all green builds. In reality, there might also be builds that fail. I'm looking here to commit where my unit testing suite did fail. And I wanna highlight a couple of ways to help another of the Dora metrics, mean time to recover. As a developer, I can see this, jump straight into the job that failed, and I'm directed to the actual test that failed, feedback on what's wrong immediately without having to comb through the logs or make guesses on hunches. We can rerun the same workflow from the start, from the job that failed, or we can rerun the job with SSH enabled. This would allow the developer to get into the actual build environment and run more complex troubleshooting themselves. It's a really powerful tool to help get back to green as quick as possible. All of those important metrics that we talked about are here in Insights as well. There are different levels for organization, project, workflow, jobs, and then insights for testing data. At the org level, I get another bird's eye view. I can see all of the projects that I have. And in addition to the info around which projects are being run more, total duration, we see a lot of those metrics that we've talked about. Organizational success rates, success rates for projects with their trend lines. I can jump into the project that we just saw, see all of the workflows that have been run. That build test deploy workflow is certainly the one that's the heaviest, it's the one that we run the most. We also see success rates for that throughput, so just how many workflows are being run per day, overall success rate. I'm gonna jump into all branches there. All right, at the workflow level on build test deploy, I can start seeing that, that information in a more granular way. So I start seeing throughput for the workflow specifically, mean time to recovery, the runs over a set time frame. So I start looking for things that might pop out, anomalies and things that I might be able to dig into and figure out uh, how to make them more optimized. Workflow success rate and then workflow duration. So again, looking for ticks, looking for things and that I might be able to use to, to help optimize my config, maybe with some of those things that we talked about. At the job level, I can see all the jobs, start looking around at duration, potentially areas where you can add, again, some of those speed optimizations and success rates. We have test insights available for recent workflow runs. We know we can look at this, get a visual on what's going on across those runs, start identifying flaky tests, the most failed test, and then the slowest test. Very good way to understand test suites and optimize from there.